How do you fix? I think the meeting notes have the wrong Zoom. <clears throat> Let's see. Invite, copy, link. Hmm. No, nope, just me. Right, uh, we'll do the usual waiting till five past to see who turns up. If you have any agenda items, you can add it to the meeting notes, which are posted in the Zoom chat and the calendar invite. Or if you're having problems accessing, you can verbalize them here. Right, and we're off. Um, usual rules, add your name to the meeting minutes. The link is in the chat, Taylor's posted it for you. Um, and again, as he was saying, if you've got any agenda items, we haven't got very many right now. Um, we will um, start working through them. So um, there's an upcoming event um, entry in here, although there isn't a great deal to say about it. Um, We've got a tug meeting, uh, our companion group on Monday, August the 2nd. Um, so uh, stick that in your calendar if you intend to turn up. I certainly plan to. Um, both the KubeCon and the ONES um, call for papers is now closed. So we're all done with writing those up. Um, 
but we don't know what the schedule is going to be or which papers will be accepted and we won't find out until the end of the month. So that's a waiting game and we'll just have to see um, how that goes. Um, the first item of, at the moment, only two in the uh, meeting notes is what is our timeline for determining best practices? Um, I would say firstly that this is an ongoing process, but actually I think it would be useful if we did set ourselves a goal for putting at least a handful of best practices in, whether we choose them by name or we simply head for account. Um, I don't know if anyone else has got any thoughts on the subject. Or if you're just hiding through sheer terror at the idea of committing, I don't know. Anybody out there? Um, I, I wonder what, what would be the point of setting a deadline? I mean, it will be ready when it's ready. If we set a deadline, is, is the point just to get us working faster? To give us a bit of motivation would be one point. Um, and I think actually it would be useful as well to have some example work to, that we have completed uh, by ONES and KubeCon, in fact. Uh, which is, you know, we've got some time before that happens. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, I think it's more a motivation thing than than anything else at this point. Also, some people in external communities are looking to see the uh, deliverables of this work group. So I'm, I've been so far reluctant to point them anywhere because I treat everything here as work in progress. But um, it will be useful to have something marked as a 0 0.1 or whatever uh, version that we can refer external uh, folks to. Yeah, we've I've been hearing that as well, Rani. Um, everybody's asking to point and similar to what Ian said, examples. So it can help other people get started if they have an end goal. They may have use cases that they talk about, but if they have a goal for why they're talking about a use case, then it could help. Um, or it may cause a best practice discussion to pop out of a use case because they start having that framework in mind. Um, I do want to reiterate something we've said before, but even the best practices, whatever we say a version one or is a release or whatever you call it, they'll all be up for updating in the future. If things change and a best practice doesn't match the current reality, then we will update it to match reality. And uh, one other thing there is, um, you know, our process as we've outlined, it is going to be use cases, a design, some best practices, and then a baseline, which we give a version number two. Um, and, you know, a set of use cases more than zero gives us the opportunity to actually complete that so that we know the full cycle of the process and then we can you know set a timeline for going to the next version afterwards um, then everybody will understand not just what we're delivering but how we're delivering it because we'll have worked through um, the entire set of work items let's put this a different way if we were to put some best practices together in relatively short order, and again, this is timeline of months, not like by Friday, which ones would we like most to have finished? Which ones do we think are most completable? Do you mean based on the, the, the use case being complete or do you mean, is it sort of pick and choose which ones we, we like? <laughs> Which ones we will not basically continually argue over, I suspect, but yeah, which, which ones do we think we have the most hope of completing either by, you know, having a solid justification or because they're relatively straightforward? It doesn't have to be based on existing use cases. So if, no. if there's a best practice that someone thinks of and we have no use case, then we'll start creating a use case to talk about that best practice. Yeah, I mean, I, I still feel, saying any. yeah, there, Go we haven't got much work on this and I think I could do, well, I know I could do more because I haven't been, I haven't had much time for this, but I, I think something on, you know, how to apply least privilege would be my personal favorite. Um, 
it's quite technical when you arrive at the recommendation, but um, the justification for doing it is relatively straightforward. And honestly, I don't expect anyone to comply with it. You know, do not use privilege of any sort or, you know, um, find ways to dodge using privilege based on CNFs I've worked with. I suspect that would be actually quite hard to achieve. But on the other hand, the point of a recommendation is to give people clues about what they could be doing differently. So I would not necessarily have a problem with that. Yeah, I mean, otherwise, the only thing I would say is, I mean, and maybe this is the wrong approach, but I think if we have use cases that have been approved or, you know, been merged, then at least that's a starting point for yeah. something that we should consider, you know, trying to derive the best practices from. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, I'm still working on my uh, very large uh, best practices document about uh, operators and CNFs. Um, it's work that I would do anyway, <laughs> and I'm working on it anyway. Uh, I'd be happy to have it aligned with uh, whatever we're doing here, but um, I, am, I have no doubt that it will create uh, arguments. So, I, I, Yes, I, I don't think we've come to a conclusion that we both like at the same time, I have to admit. But... Um, Pal, are there any, um, you're saying there's going to be a whole set of practices under operator usage. So are there any in particular that you think are more agreeable to a larger set? And another thing that we could say is if it's very agreed to or fully agreed to within Kubernetes community and everybody is on other applications are saying this is the normal practice you should use in this situation, then that would also be a good one to look at. Well, we'll see. I, I really hope to be done with it uh, uh, this week. I keep adding more sections. Um, it's I, I'm not following our, uh, our structure very closely. It's more a discussion of uh, architectural considerations versus practical considerations. And uh, uh, main uses I'm looking at are stateful components, uh, configuration management and disaggregation, <laughs> uh, which is a uh, more architectural. Um, so I, I don't know if anything I'll, I write will really be objectionable, but I, I think it will have to be shoehorned into the format that that we have here. But I'm, <laughs> you know, I'm I'm happy to con I'm contributing it anyway to to the universe, and uh, you know we can maybe use it to grab things or start a discussion or uh, see where it goes. It's just hard for me right now to commit uh, that this would be uh, a deliverable at a certain time. But uh, I'll throw it into the pipeline and see what happens. Yeah, I would say with that, that, you know, it may be that our structure, I mean, because I've had thoughts about this as well, it may be that our structure isn't exactly right for expressing some of these ideas because, you know, I do this exactly the same as you do. Sometimes you arrive at a conclusion from studying the technical problem rather than the use case. Um, and I think there's a little bit of both thrown in here. Um, you know, it's both what we need to do and also what is practical to do and whether or not, you know, you work with the world as it is or, <clears throat> uh, or uh, um, you know, you view how do I put this? You view, view best practices in isolation and see whether they make sense for us. You don't always drag your every bit of information to, to come up with a recommendation from the experiences of an operator. So yeah, it doesn't surprise me that you're coming up with a document that doesn't entirely align with the way we've structured things, but that may be that the structure needs a little bit of looking at. Well, look, I'll, I'll be happy to show it uh, at some point and hopefully soon, <laughs> hopefully on, on next week's agenda, if I can uh, get it done in time. And uh, we'll, we'll just see where we go from there. Hey, uh, this is Sheetal. Taylor, I have a question for you. How do we see the telecom user group CNCF 
group, right? And this working group merge or will they stay separate? Um, will our agendas be separate? Uh, what do we see? Uh, any conversion strategy in the near future? Um, there's no plans on merging the telecom user group and the CNF working group. The CNF working group has a, a more narrow focus than mm -hmm. the telecom user group. Okay. Um, <clears throat> we're looking at best practices within the, the CNF work group. We're looking at best practices for running networking applications on Kubernetes based platforms. So that would tie in with cloud native best practices that are applied to a Kubernetes environment. That's the, the first goal mm -hmm. and we could expand from there. And the telecom user group would be more open discussions. So there could be um, looking at a particular project that's interesting in the networking space for running on Kubernetes. It could be operators or some other thing that's just a very specific technical solution. And we're not looking at saying this is the one solution in the CNF working group. We're giving the general best practices, which people can implement them in many ways. If, if similar to CNCF is a la carte for projects. And that's, we're kind of giving the bounds around that for best practices. Does that help? Yeah, mm -hmm. it does. Uh, I asked the question because I guess in the white papers, right, where we have the cloud native network functions definitions, can we tie it back to the definitions that we were working earlier, a couple of weeks ago in this working group? And so that was the main intent whenever we have the work, the artifacts and the best practices use cases produced through this working group, can we leverage some of those under the telecom user group? Uh, sure. I mean, everything that we're producing or helping is going to be useful outside of the group. So one of their areas could be the telecom user group at a wider, mm -hmm. um, maybe, maybe white papers, articles, blogs, whatever Correct. discussions, and then potentially some of the um, information like terminology and other stuff make make it up into the CNCF global um, mm -hmm. glossary, um, which have been looking at some contributions there. Great, thank you. Well, um, that led to a bunch of useful discussion um, of which I've got a bunch of links to go read now. Um, Tal, was that you adding the OpenShift stuff, by the way? Uh, no, it wasn't. On the um, container should execute the process as a non-root user? Yeah, that one. I added those. Um, I don't remember who came up with it originally. Um, that was in a, another list when we were working kind of a, a collaboration with Anakit and a few other groups and the tag was mm. part of the, um, I think Frederick, yeah. you had mentioned some of this, maybe the SE Linux. I think I may have found the OpenShift and some of the other things. Yeah, I, I've certainly seen this practice. In fact, I've used this practice. So I'm actually not, um, I'm not objecting to it. My comment is more, can we find the objective way of saying why it's worth doing versus OpenShift requires it or OpenShift severely, uh, significantly benefits from it. Um, so if we can find that objective view, that will make it easier to write up. Yeah, sure. I think there is the, maybe some of the documentation and the Bitnami um, one was, gave a, a good overview, but I think it could be generally applicable written to be generally applicable. And we can definitely find other references to supplement. Was, was this specifically for SE Linux or was this on a different topic? No, it's just a potential 
best practice about ex not executing a process. Executing a process as a non-root user. Ah, that makes sense. Mm. I, I have an idea for a very low-hanging fruit best practice <laughs> that we can choose. Maybe that might be an approach that we could uh, uh, go for. Um, something, I'll just throw it out here, see what you think. Um, it's something I, I got into recently where I had to implement SCTP in Kubernetes. Now, it's a fairly new feature in Kubernetes that uh, Kubernetes services act, actually support the SCTP protocol in addition to TCP and UDP. Um, but there are aspects here that are unrelated to Kubernetes. The, the question is, does the, uh, does the operating system itself have support for it? And there are actually two approaches to implementing SCTP in Linux, one of which is using a user stack, a user mode stack. And there are also kernel modules that uh, uh, could do it as well. Now, uh, when you write your applications, you target either of them. They're, they're not the same APIs. Uh, a user stack would be trivial to deploy everywhere um, and would be able to fully support Kubernetes. But uh, if you rely on the kernel stack, you need requirements for the actual infrastructure, for the host, for the mm. module to be mm. loaded. Um, so uh, there's, there's a pretty easy, I, I think, way we can come in here and, and offer best practice. This is, a, again, a fairly new feature in Kubernetes that a lot of people are excited about. So it might be an area where we can uh, say something uh, smart coming from our uh, understanding of networking and where performance is needed in the kernel, et cetera. Yeah, well, I, I've seen models of using SCTP that don't require Kubernetes features and benefit from that as well, which, um, you know, if you have a, an, a second interface and the kernel modules, then you just go go and use SCP on, SCTP on your second interface and Kubernetes has no involvement in that other than the platform as a whole has to have the kernel modules in. so questions we could ask ourselves firstly is would we expect the kernel modules to be present on a platform that is running um uh, that is going to run cnfs and the answer seems to be to me why wouldn't you i mean it seems like a logical thing to basically build that module in even if it's even if the cnfs happens not to use it, it it's no skin off anyone's nose to actually install it the other one, which is a slightly bigger question, is: Is there one of the other one or the other of those paths that is better, or alternatively, should we make sure both of them are possible? So it it may be re removed from certain environments because they're in the security hardening. They're trying to reduce yeah. the attack surface. So you may actually see some environments where where it ends up being removed. Uh, and it, but it is good to call out to say that if you if you want to use SCTP with with Kubernetes or within the kernel space, then uh, there these are the type of things that you should you should enable. But I, I would be a little bit careful on, on that. It, it would be good to check if uh, G, if uh, GCP and AWS themselves have SCTP enabled or not, because. Uh, it is likely we're going to see some deployments into into those style of environments, especially when you consider the things like Anthos or uh, or Outpost as they continue to gain more prominence. Uh, we'll start to see more uh, edge deployments with that. Uh, yeah, exactly. I'll, I'll even mention that RHEL uh, disables SCTP, blacklists the module entirely, exactly because of its uh, uh, security issues. Um, so I, I don't think it's trivial uh, to assume that, that you would always have it available. Uh, in any case, I didn't mean to start a whole discussion about it, but rather offer it as a potential uh, low hanging yeah. that we could attack. It may, may, may be not as low hanging as we were hoping for, but still, um, <laughs> uh, on the other hand, you know where the minefield, where the mines are in the minefield now if you want to get something through. So that does help. Well, you know, we, if we too, choose things that are too trivial, uh, well, what contribution are we making? I, I, yeah. I think this group, this group, we expect this group to uh, be a, a melting pot of expertise, <laughs> right? Yeah, well, out. it's true. And, and we might be lacking a spot of expertise here because one question I would like to know from CNF developers which obviously are not as you seem to be in the in the minority in the group is have you used SCTP and how have you used SCP and why did you choose to do it that way? 
Uh, that's true. If, if we don't have enough people who have the expertise, then it's not an area we should go. But um, well, um, I mean, so. it, it, it would be I'm, I'm willing to, you know, I, our recommendations ideally shouldn't be um, ill considered. So getting that expertise is perfectly useful, but that's fine. You know, it doesn't necessarily mean it needs somebody on this meeting every week. What it means is that you need to survey your audience. You need to talk to people who are doing this. Um, and I can think of people from Cisco that you might want to talk to on this subject. Um, I can think of another couple of companies you might want to talk to on this subject as well. You may even have your own contacts. Um, yeah, I mean, we, we could we could go and do the research too. It's not like uh, mm. not every one of us knows everything about everything. <laughs> Okay, well, that um, that was <laughs> a conversation. Now, um, I threw in CNF packaging for delivery. I'm not saying this is necessarily easy, but um, I think uh, some of the use cases we're already talking about, about, you know, initial startup, um, start speaking in this direction. A CNF is a collection of containers. It is hypothetically a Helm chart. Uh, it doesn't have to be a Helm chart, but, you know, we would reasonably assume that it would be a Helm chart would be involved in bringing it up for the first time. Um, that Helm chart is going to have parameters. Those parameters could do with being more than just open to free for all. At least some of them you would think would be, you know, commonly expected. Um, that being the case, I wonder whether there's anything we could do about um, starting up CNFs. But the question I come to here is it is it's very easy to cross the line between making a recommendation and making a brand new standard. Um, and I don't know what we should do about that. Should our best practices include shiny new standards or should we just at least put them on one side so that they can be recommended independently? Let's write them up and see what it looks like once it's actually- Fair, fair comment. Um, I mean, they, writing the standard and then figuring out where to stick it in is pretty much what Tal's trying to do, I think, with his, um, uh, with his operator's stuff. Um, so um, that's probably the right answer. Um, I, I would say I'm, uh, there's a delicate point here. Uh, you know, we, we're not a standards body. I don't think this group, we, we, we all participate in other standards body. And I don't think we want this group to be a standards body. We, we definitely don't. Our best practices guys aren't supposed to be standards recommendations. If, if we, I, I, at least I don't think so. I, if we do reach a point where we want to suggest standards, then it could be an output from this group that goes elsewhere. But um, yeah. this doesn't seem the best place to do that specifically. So. So it's more about looking at the ecosystem, what's available. So you mentioned Helm. Helm is very popular, at least right now. <laughs> so um, standardizing on Helm would not be something that we, I think, should suggest, right? It's, it's more a question as if you're using Helm, if you decided to have a chart repository uh, in your uh, deployment environment, well, here are some suggestions that we have. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, I, I think, um, you know, again, this is more about how we we'll write standards than it is about um, best practices. But um, every standard needs an out for this technology will become outdated. And when you have the next one, this is how you use this standard with the, with the, with the next technology you want to use. Um, it's been, it, it's quite easy to do. Uh, it's quite easy, for instance, to basically have a package that basically says there is a Helm chart in there. Alternatively, there's a thing in here that you've never thought of, but we added like three years later. Um, so certainly there are ways and means of doing that, but you always need to make sure your standard has an escape route for, for when the, the standard itself becomes somewhat outdated. Right. In, in the end, I think it's more about a general approach. So I agree with how you started this when you said that when we talk, when we think about packaging, in the end, it's these manifests, right, that are usually in YAML, although they could be in JSON too. But uh, these manifests can be generated from something. So it could be a Helm chart, it could be some other tool. Uh, but the point is, is really focusing on those resources and what they are, enumerating them, managing them, thinking about them together, 
So th those are general best practices that would work for uh, whatever specific technology you want to choose. Yeah, perhaps not generated from, but describing the fact that such a thing is in the package and how it's supposed to be used. But yes, uh, your point is valid. So we're saying that if a packaging format were to exist, we don't necessarily have to define the packaging format, but we could say these are the properties we expect of it, including there is a manifest, the manifest will contain this information. Then we can go and take that and write a packaging format that's compliant and stick it somewhere that isn't within the CNF working group. Right, or exactly. Standards that already exist. Yeah, and, and the cloud native aspects here are important because uh, as you pointed out delicately, there's a difference between day one and, and day two. You know, Helm can do one and not really the other, and uh, yeah, th th there are, there's a lot of thinking there. It's it's packaging is not simple, <laughs> but I think we we might be able to make a contribution and specifically for CNFs and not just uh, generally. Well, uh, uh, frankly, if if you could write a document that um, um, that told me how to start any CNF that I found from anywhere, then I would hug you if it wasn't for social distancing. Because, I mean, seriously, it, it, it is a problem that I keep encountering, um, that a, any two CNFs, you literally no idea how to start them. And then you have to go and beg for the document that tells you how to start them. And then it's a new exploration into a, a new way of doing it because it's never the same as anyone else's. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, th this is where operators can come in, uh, workflows can come in. So the ecosystem is quite broad and... I think what we can do is maybe take a, a more high level approach and look at different ways you can think about it. So you can think about it as, okay, here are manifests and then there are instructions on how to raise it. Mm -hmm. uh, you can make your components uh, autonomous. So the idea is that they self-configure and self-manage, right? This is the yeah. kind of idealized cloud native approach in which there shouldn't be installation instructions, right? Once the pods come up, uh, they should <laughs> uh, do what they need to do uh, to stand themselves up. Um, yeah, yeah, but, but right. So, you, you know, there is always a bootstrap phase here, right? I can walk backwards. Well, what brings the pods up? Oh, well, the operator brings the pods up. Well, what brings the operator up? Oh, well, right. um, yeah. Um, and then what puts the software in a place where the operator could even be brought up? And uh, um, uh, um, so um, it, it may be less about worrying about the stages in between, which are theoretically optional. I can use an operator. I don't have to use an operator. There are benefits to using an operator. But how would I get that first sort of, you know, there is always a first step where I have a shiny new Kubernetes cluster with no software on it, and I need to put software on it. If we could work out what the first step was so that following steps could happen, then, you know, and if that were Helm, right? Helm is a perfectly reasonable way of making an operator happen then um, that would get us a certain, well, it would get us further than we currently are, at least. Um, anyway. Yes, I'll, I'll, I'll true, and I'll point out that, again, you know, what's special about CNFs in the telco environment is that we usually have OSS, BSS on top of this. So the, the day one, day two is, has to be integrated in some way into, into the larger network orchestration. Yeah, um, but although there's nothing to that makes us special there, in the sense that um, you know all applications start with a chunk of, uh, they at least have to be kicked to to begin them, and then there is at least an outside chance that they take later configuration. So yeah, I mean both of those things are not exclusive to us. We're not special. We have opinions, but our opinions fit into the fairly standard run of the mill of what you do. Hopefully. Okay, um, that was a long discussion. Um, it involves lots of items. Um, it might be a good idea if we had a chat on the channel afterwards and see if we can actually pick some items that everybody promises to work on for a couple of hours this week. Um, just because I know full well I'm terrible at, at committing time to this. If, I'm probably better if somebody holds me to it. Uh, if anyone else wants to work that way, then we can, we can try and figure it out um, in the channel later. Um, Ian, I'd like to go back to what you started before um, on this whole conversation. It was about getting some best practices out. So yeah. if there's some topics that we think are agreeable, more agreeable, like the least privilege, then I would personally like to help try to get some of those out. I think it'll... Yeah.
Get the ball rolling I, 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 for everything I, else. For you, you and I, I think would happily kind of again we we could do some work on least privilege this week and see how far we can take it let's worry less about what we produce and more about actually spending some time on it so if i promise you half a day of sitting there and beating on least privilege documents um that would that seems like a productive way of, of going about this sounds good i'll block the time out and if anyone yeah. else wants to help on that one or if someone else has a another area that they'd like to focus on, um, then let me know. I mean, Taylor and I in the past have found that basically holding ourselves up in a meeting and sitting there effectively typing at each other does actually, it's one reasonably good way of making progress. Um, you know, you can all play that game if you want to basically find a partner and work with them. Um, if that's not your way of working, then so be it. But I'm just saying it works for me. Okay, um, let us move on to the poll requests and with apologies because Zoom hates my laptop. So I'm actually on my phone. I can't easily share the screen, but I will have a look at the poll requests. And if anyone else wants to basically take the lead and share what share a website, you're welcome to. We have three poll requests sitting here. One is um, onboarding CNFs. Uh, one is updating the glossary and one is adding 5G RAN use cases. Um, I'm inclined to start from the bottom and work up because uh, I think the RAN use cases have seen the least discussion so far. Um, right, so has anyone got any general opinions on this at this point in time? Anyone want to pass judgment on it? I think it's a good starting point. Um, all of these can be uh, dived into with a lot more depth, but uh, it's a good starting point. Yeah, I, I have to say use case one, as, um, and I told you we shouldn't number use cases, by the way, but still, use case one, um, the synchronization and timing, I suspect, oddly, I mean, I know it's technically in depth, and it's probably not a clear area we have, you know, everybody knows what we're talking about, but it, it should be one where we can basically be quite straightforward in writing it up. You need synchronization and timing um, propagated via the network with great accuracy, there is a perfectly good way of making that happen in the kernel. There is a perfectly good way of consuming that from CNF processes. Um, so the best practice is actually, there is only one way of doing this. The best practice is really easy to write. Um, so that one, independently of the other one, should be pretty easy to deal with. Um, use case two, um, I think is the standard, you need more than one interface for not pod, which is really the way Maltus thinks about this, but you need more than one interface for a CNF. Um, you know, different traffic goes in different directions and gets treated differently by the, by the network. So my personal opinion is that use case two treads in areas where we know that things like ENO exist and there's some, finding exactly the right thing to say is difficult. But use case one is probably not terribly contentious because there's really just one way of doing it. And writing it down is actually the most useful thing we can do. You know, you will run um, PTP for L. Your CNFs will keep checking the kernel clock because it will be tight, tightly bound to the clock that's distributed over the network. We just write it down and that would be done. Yeah, I, I think if um, someone needs more accuracy than this provides, um, the one thing we could add in there is a lead back to to this uh, to this repository to say open a new issue, and yeah. we can also investigate to see if there's a a more accurate path if they would like to, uh, basically yeah. laying a path for them to collaborate, uh, because it's it, this is how long is a piece of string like this is probably accurate enough for most. Uh, but probably not accurate enough for, for everything. 
and what's what level of complexity do you want to add into the system in order to achieve your your level of accuracy so for so someone, someone has, has, yeah someone has to ask for more accuracy before it's necessary to provide more accuracy there is again my experience with ran here and it's ran that requires this level of accuracy is that they ask for um they ask for ptp or synky of the network and they ask you to run ptp or l or synky for l um and then they rely on the system clock which actually funny enough they never tell you but um if we spelled that out and said this is what you do in the in the platform to make it available and this is how the cnf consumes it then we've got the things that the relevant audiences should be doing in order to get an accurate clock. And again, if it proves insufficiently accurate, I don't think we're going to be the ones here to say what accuracy means. I know that sounds weird, um, but you know, if I were to go and grab the system clock, precisely how many nanoseconds from the absolute truth is it? Well, that's a very difficult question to answer, but um, you know, we can just say this gets you a, this is the best practice for getting an accurate clock. If somebody comes along and says, well, it's not accurate enough, then our first question would be, what is accurate to you? What does accurate mean? So that we can write a better use case. But yeah, I mean, I think use case one can be concluded um, and that would be great. Maybe we end up splitting the pull request into two because it does contain two use cases. The other one, I personally speaking, I need to go and revisit. It's been a while since I read this stuff. So do you, we've had this open for quite a while and mm. I don't think that um, we've made much progress since the first time it was shown. Um, and I don't think we've had issues come back in, I don't know, a couple of months. No, but it doesn't need a sheet to approve it. It needs us to agree right. that it's good enough. So that's, so we're talking about a use case and not a best practice. Um, there's a few formatting things that have been committed. Does this item that you and Frederick are talking about for virtualized or non in the talk here, is it a blocker for a use case versus a best practice? This is a situation that's being put forward. Yeah, a situation is fine. That's what we want in a use case. Right. Right, so that it, there's comments here, which is fine if we're just saying it's discussion, but is it actually anything that we need to change? Like, how I, can I we think, get to I, point I to think that is just a wording issue. Um, funnily enough, I've learned more about this in the last couple of months. Uh, I think that's just a wording issue, and I think I can possibly make that wording a little more explicit. All right. If you really want to know about the kernel VDSO, I can tell you horrible things, but um, yes. The, uh, no, I'm I, just wondering is if it's a blocker before we merge and then have another PR to update? Like, are it we would out? not merge it without fixing that wording, but I think what All you're right. saying is, uh, I think we could have uh, a revision of this for review next week. How's that? That sounds good. And if, yeah, I can, I mean, I can add a little bit of clarity here by what I meant by virtualized as well, which is uh, usually when you look at uh, time in, in Linux, uh, you do some, some form of get time. It's usually based upon some timestamp that's within the processor itself. And there's actually multiple clocks within the, uh, with, within the uh, processor with, with each core that gets incremented with each, uh, with each program. Every time they do perform an uh, an offcode, or every time you have a, uh, a every time you have a, a certain uh, action occur within within the CPU, and we've actually had issues with this in file systems before, where you might have two threads running in uh, in two separate cores, and they become desynchronized enough that uh, the order of timestamps to get synchronized end up not uh, not matching what you would expect. So you can have something that uh, it came afterwards that appears to have happened earlier in time in, in terms of timestamps. So there's a couple of inaccuracies like that that, uh, that tend to occur from that. So that's why I was saying that these things are not are, are not virtualized, but there there is sometimes depending on the so where you get your time, 
that there can be uh, issues of, of synchronization uh, there, depending on the hardware architecture. All right, maybe you can um, work with Ian on, on a revision of this. Um, yeah, I, I don't... So it seems like you'll need to do a, a fork of this one. You'll probably have to go in and, and fork this tree if you're gonna do it or... Mm -hmm. yeah, well, I, th we'll I think we want to split, split one use case out from the other. So yeah, there'll be a use, there'll be a PR that's half of this use case, but yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I think this this particular one we were talking about hard specialized hardware that helps with uh, with that as well. So uh, much I suspect much of that goes away, uh, or it gets constrained enough that it doesn't really doesn't really matter. Yeah, you you need PTP suitable um, hardware, whether it's the the NIC or another device. And you need a device driver in the kernel that offers the PTP interface, but then everything from there goes, again, we can write this down. Some of this is really a step-by-step -step deployment thing. I wouldn't be averse to writing that down in a best practice, but I think that would be auxiliary information. I think the best practice is the network has the timing information on it. It shall be offered to the application this way. And then here's the details you need to know that will help you get through that. I, I don't see it's a bad thing that best practices offer people a bit of help. Hey, Ian, I can work with you to maybe create a branch and we'll update this PR to not go to main, but instead go to like a working branch and merge. And then we could split it out to, to keep focusing and iterating. That way we get, yeah. get on something that we can manage. All right, what's next then? So this is the first PR. I'm gonna close um, it. The second one working upwards. He says confidently, having lost his window. Um, Update glossary. Oh no! Yes, it is. It's, but but Jeff isn't here, so we should be able to get through this. And all right. Um, I don't know if we've hit all of the things at this point. Let's see. We have tons of requests. We have more update requests than we had the last time I looked, actually. Tao, this is your pull request. Um, do you want to try and resolve some of these conversations that are sitting here in the um, over the next week? Would you like to resolve some of the conversations that are sitting here in the uh, in the commentary? Um, no, <laughs> I I can click the resolve conversation button, but that's not what we need here. We need to to discuss. I th I think the big one here is. Um, there are two different approaches to defining what a network function is. Um, I, I, don't, I don't know what to do with this pull request anymore. It's, um, I think we just need to continue to discuss until, until we reach an alignment. That, that's basically it. Um, and I, I would like to do it on GitHub, but I think uh, very, very few of us here are, are looking at GitHub. So I think these meetings are the right place to uh, to, to get feedback from everybody. Um, I'll try to help you both places, Tal. <laughs> thank you. I, I hear what you're saying. Some people are into the verbal here and some will be willing to read right with you. So I put a pretty big one. I guess I'll speak to this and it uh, has to do before, with. Before we move forward, I just wanted to ask a quick thing. It's Ildiko here. Uh, would it make sense to break up the pull request to smaller chunks? I don't know. Like, um, if they are not depending on each other, then maybe we could like discuss one or two terms, come to an agreement, put it up in a pull request. If anyone wants to comment in the next, I don't know, week or two, they can. If there are no objections, just merge that one and then move over to the next one. So we don't have to nurture one big pull request and chew on it for months? Yeah, that might be a good idea. Um, well, the, the problem is that that they, they do interrelate some of the terms. Um, so, and, and to an extent, it doesn't matter. You know, if, if we resolve issues, these are mini pull, mini issues, right? If you resolve a conversation, that's resolved. So. 
when it's finally done, it'll be merged. Uh, I, I, nobody is putting a gun to our head and saying merge it right now. So it'll be, it'll be ready when it's ready. Uh, yes, it would have been nice if, if in the beginning I could have divided it into multiple, but they, they did come as a set. These are, the terms are interrelated and they refer to each other. So it'll be kind of weird if we accept one and not the others. Um, and in any case, it is what it is at this point. <laughs> Fair enough, just move on. Yeah. No, no, it's, it's, it's a good point. And we did discuss this last week. And, um, but um, yeah, we, we are where we are right now. All right. Um, we, I, I agree with separating and there may be a point where we, we want to accept some of the stuff and I guess it doesn't matter. We can come at this different way. I may come and take the ones out that we want and create a new PR. So I could just copy it right out of here. But Kubernetes, we agree on that one. Um, sure, I, I don't Cal, think that's how you that's don't my, have to go uh, back and yeah. go split back. it up. But if anyone else wants to split any of these, similar to what we're doing with the 5G, then we'll do that. And my computer is just freezing up. So to... another thing happened with this pull request is that people uh, came in and did other edits that had nothing to do with my original pull request. So for example, Kubernetes, I did not touch that, but other people used my pull request to continue doing edits. So um, it, it kind of a little bit grew out of control here. That's true. That's true. And I, I guess from that standpoint, um, Tal, you could always say, I don't want any changes. And then someone else can come in, yeah, not saying that you're it, actually communicating that, but anyone putting a PR, if you're working on it and you're like, nope, I disagree, that's fine. Someone else can come and copy everything and make the changes in another PR. So similar to open source, fork it and do what you want and put that forward. And then in the end, as a group, we'll decide on which direction we like. Um, I want to bring this back, the, just the discussion on the main items that were problematic. It's what, Tal, you were pointing at, the different approaches to defining um, network function. So this one, I believe, is what you'd originally put forward. I don't know if it's been modified. I don't think it has. I think this was what you had. Um, for a CNF. Uh, True, and it, it's, it's a very small edit over the original. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so um, I don't think we actually had a CNF um, defined in the terms yet. So you, you were putting it in, it was, we had it somewhere else in, the, in, in there, and you pointed up to the, the global glossary, which is new, so that's fine, and that's good. Um, the, my thing, which I was pointing here with regards to network function is when people are coming to this group particularly, so if, if they're looking at the group, they're looking at best practices and other information that we put out, then they're going to go, okay, so y'all are the cloud native network function working group. So what does that mean? Well, that means this, okay, it's a network function. Okay. Well, then what is a network function? So immediately they're starting from the point of your group is about cloud native with, you know, these, wh whatever this, it's a cloud native application. That's what it says, a cloud native. It's a cloud native application developed using cloud native principles and it's a network function. Okay. So that's must be, I'm without knowing anything else, I guess that's a type of application because it says it is a cloud native application. So now let's actually go and see what a network function is. It's a functional block within infrastructure and maybe components of network services. So this doesn't to me sound like a, just a regular application. I mean, there's a lot of, there's more terms. What is a functional block? What is network infrastructure? And I think the very last one, I put in two commits. So we've had a long discussion. I'm not gonna go through all this. Someone wants to, if you're interested, go read it. Um, this is really the last part. 
to relate to the current CNF definition that you proposed. So trying to phrase net, the definition for network function to be related and application providing a unit of network functionality. So trying to communicate, what do we mean by a network function or functional block? So it's functionality. I, th I don't think we need to define that. And network, there's potential. I know there's, there's some debate around that, but let's say network functionality. The network function, now that we know what it is, could be coupled or decoupled from the underlying hardware. And I put this because there was a lot of discussions about whether we're saying it's virtualized or not and all those, so trying to, and whether you are directly still requiring hardware. So it, it tries to keep it open to a lot of cases and it's not saying it's cloud native. The network functionality may be provided directly as a network service or be components of larger network services. So Frederick's bump in the wire firewall, I would say, uh, which for those that you haven't seen it, it's, there's a discussion item and you can go look at the diagrams that he had. But a bump in the wire, small transparent firewall can be providing a network service. And it's a single, it could be a single small network function or application that's providing that service. But it also could be one component of something much larger, like um, maybe the, um, convergent charging service and a 5G mobile core. And you're gonna have a lot of different components, but say, okay, this whole thing is what we're saying is the network service that we're providing. But it, it contains a lot of smaller components, which could run standalone. They just happen to not be. So the, so, the idea that was to build something, have something that relates to your CNF definition. I, uh, it's fine. I, I feel like this is, uh, network function is not very controversial. <laughs> I, I made the point here that, you know, in the end, some of these terms we don't really own. Um, it's, you know, we, we're not going to find the best definition of network function in our group. We're not the right place to do that specifically. Um, it, it's something we accept as a given. Network functions are used. <laughs> Uh, these terms exist out there. Um, so I, somebody commented that we might as well just uh, cite Etsy or someplace else. I think that that could make sense. Um, in the end, these terms should be useful for us. So, so Taylor, yeah. you started with this user story of somebody coming to this page from outside and not knowing what a network function is. Um, who, who is that person? <laughs> uh, they they no, wouldn't no, be involved no. in the group at all. Yeah. Yeah. So Again, let's start with, work, work. let's commit the definitions as necessary one by one that we are not arguing about. Cloud native network function, oddly, we seem to have settled on, even if we can't define network function. Yes, it would be nice to have a definition for network function, but I would live without if we're being quite honest. And there are a handful of others. So if we can go through them, and I'm sorry, Tal, I know this falls on your head and I know you very much tried to do a good job here and get everything done. But if we can try and get them done just one by one in from least to most controversial, that would be forward progress. Whereas at the moment, this is a very much a, a monster comment fest. Um, and the discussion has been useful, but it's not gonna conclude as a whole in a while. So maybe we can do this in piecewise so I, sure, I'm not sure really what to do here. I mean, I can just click resolve conversation when I feel it's resolved, but I, I, I think what you're asking here is to get some sort of agreement among committers for it, which um, I'm not really sure how to do. Do you, uh, do you expect me to reach out to them personally or um, what, what do you want let, me to let, do? Let, let, let me take an example. If I took the definition of cloud native network function that we have, and I threw in that it doesn't mean containerized because I think that's useful context. If I took the definition of virtual net function that we had, which I think became quite clear and the discussion did help clarify it, would anyone throw their arms up in the air and say that's wrong at this point? 
I'm I'm not sure. I'd have to see that one. I feel like the virtual was also good, um, and the cloud native. And I will agree with you on adding. Um, it, it doesn't mean containerized. Then I think yeah. those are good. What I disagree with strongly is you, trying to use an existing f uh, definition from other groups, which um, don't have it, actually it's an entire Etsy standard if you just want to go to that so it's not one line it's a large set so there's a whole understanding there and I disagree with using that it doesn't help I, with new well, audiences if we want to get them involved I wasn't it asking that mm -hmm. question go ahead. So, uh, I, I wasn't Sorry, asking that ahead. question I was simply saying there are uncontentious and more contentious problems here the uncontentious ones can't we get shot of them so that we can focus our attention on why we have problems with more contentious ones. Because, you know, the fact that we're having this, you know, we've gone from point to point to point down this means that we're not committing any of it. Okay, so just focusing on how do we do the others? So I don't think that there's a pr problem, let me look through, other than uh, yeah, so virtual network function, there is no contention right now on this definition. Physical network function, there's also no contention. The last comments, if you read through these, they're just general conversation and nobody is specifically saying, let's modify physical. Um, Cladified network function, um, I, I don't know, I haven't looked to see if who said to remove or not, but I, I think we should remove Cloudified. I don't think it helps. So let's see, containerized network function. There's so no I, I hate to interrupt Taylor, but we're, we're at the top of the hour. I think yeah. Really yeah. Need... I'm afraid we do. I've got to move to another meeting as well. Um, but right. again, I, I, my, my request to you all is if we can work out what is not contentious and put a pull request in for just that so that we get it done. And if there's anything else that is contentious, then, you know, the subset of interested parties can argue to their heart's content. But, the, but hopefully other people can work with the, um, the definitions that are actually, you know, founda honestly foundational to what we're trying to do. So um, it, it gets us moving forward. All right. Yeah, I'll, I'll say I'll, I'll resolve network function. I'll just take your definition, Taylor, because I, I simply don't care. I don't think it matters how we defined it. So if there's something that you prefer, I'm, I'm very happy to give you that. <laughs> Cloudify network function is more complicated. Let's discuss. Hmm. That, okay. That, that's it. So anyone that wants to read, those are the two to go look, look at. Um, if you want to put a plus one tell on the network function. Um, there's two there suggestions. There's some grammatical Go mistakes ahead. there that I'll just fix, but I'll, I'll fix them. Yeah. All right. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. All right. Thank you, everybody. We will see you again next week.